Um, in today's video, um, I'm actually going to be doing a care video on praying mantises. I will be doing it on a species which is probably my favourite. I'll just go and get a scientific name down because I'm absolutely rubbish at scientific names. So this is one, this is a scientific name, so it's a Malaysian flower mantis. Still has the price tag on it. I was thinking of putting this up for sale, but I'm not going to now. So it is a cre Creobrota ubranus, or ubranus. I don't know if I've pronounced that right, but it is a Malaysian flower mantis. When they're adults, they do look like spiny flower mantises, which I have two of, um, but without spines. They look almost exactly the same. Um, so this is its cage, it is at the roof up there. So I think this is an L2 or 3. Um, and this cage can do it for its whole entire life. Um, I will just um, tell you a little bit about the size of the cage now, now that I've got one down. Um, it should be the height at least three times the width of the, not width, the length of the mantis. Um, meaning the mantis, when the mantis shed, which is the most dangerous part for a mantis, um, it needs at least one time double its size so it can shed out of its skin and three times the size so it can move around and get out of its skin um and also don't make it too big one it can shock the mantis and two it may make it hard to find its food um and i'll probably go on to feeding now um another tip for feeding a prey mantis would be um if you're just going to feed it inside its cage, now I'll go through all like kind of the most frequent times of the mantis stage to feed them and then least frequent. So the most frequent time is when they are hatchlings or nymphs. Um, you should be feeding them every other day at the very, very start, maybe every day at the very, very start. Very, very small fruit flies, maybe two at the most. Um, but when they hatch, they will be hatching together, so a couple of them may eat each other, but that is normally when they've had their first molt. Um, so, um, as they're very young, fruit flies are the best. Um, I don't think I have any in here at the moment. No, I don't. Um, they're out there somewhere. Um, but you should be feeding them fruit flies as an, a nymph, and then L1, you can move them to something like... Right, so you can get smaller versions of these. These are the only ones I have. These are medium small crickets, um, as you can see in there. Um, you can get the small crickets, which are smaller than these. That is for L1 to L2s. These are for L3s. Um, I just give them one of these. If they're my slightly bigger mantises, I do give them two. But... Um, a lot of mantises do have trouble with eating, no matter how often or no matter how spaced out um, you do feed your mantis. Sometimes they will still be reluctant for eating. So if you have um, something like, where well, I have one, here it is. If you have something like this, a waxworm, I've just got a delivery box on my foot. With some cell tape. I've just had some deliveries of prey mantises and live food. I can't remember, but I'll do a delivery video very soon and like my reptile room tour, I guess. And so you can put it in something like this. Don't worry, it is well, it depends on the size of the mantis. You could not fit a full grown um, adult prey mantis in here, male or female. Um, but if it's something like an L2, L3, maybe L4, depending on what species, because some species are smaller, um, you can put it in something like this, and it doesn't have a lot of space to move around, but they don't tend to move around too much in the day. Some species do, some species don't, and it can easily get its food inside. So um, I'd put something in like fruit flies, very small crickets, very small locusts, nothing any bigger than that in such a small pot. I'd only put maybe one 
maybe two to three fruit flies because um, big crickets have actually been known for biting and eating your animals. So um, definitely not Mario worms, maybe mealworms. Um, but if you have a slightly larger species of praying mantis or you have an adult, I definitely put it in something like this, which is a cricket tub. These are just the stuff that I put some of my stick and set eggs in when I send them off. Um, so it does have tissue in, but they don't have tissue in when you get them. These are the tubs that you get your live food in. Um, so you can just put it in this. Some mantises do tend to struggle to climb, um, especially in plastic containers. So I just put a little bit of fabric at the top, especially my peacock mantis and one of my spiny fly mantises. They do tend to have a little bit of trouble climbing on it, especially if it's wet and like it's been sprayed with water. You can just put it on like that. I, what I normally do is I put the mantis on this and then I put it in so it's inside when I put the lid on and I leave it in at the most two days um, if you're really really struggling to feed it and you just leave it in a small container and the, the chances are it may eat at least one thing um, so I do have a problem with my peacock mantis um, as I said with eating it's a male it's an L3 I believe or L4 um, I don't know, I didn't get told. Um, and it does have struggle with it did does have trouble with eating. It did eat when I first got it, it's absolutely fine. But I was gonna pass it on, I was gonna rehome it or sell it. But then um, I found out it's eating trouble, so I kept it. I do sell a lot of my phone numbers just because I get that money. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna move on to one more thing in this video and then I'll do the rest in a different video. So this is my peacock mantis, which I believe is an L3 um, by the looks, maybe L4. Um, so it does have trouble eating, as you can see its abdomen is quite thin. Um, I have, it did actually eat a couple of fruit flies yesterday, but, okay, don't do comfort me, please. Um, <laughs> so it did actually eat a couple of fruit flies yesterday, but that is not much in terms of food for this size mantis. They should be eating one to two of these. The abdomen does not have to look full, but some species do just eat, so it will look full. Um, but that's another problem. You do have to um, keep track of the amount that you're feeding them and keep track of the amount that you put in their cage because some species like budwing mantises or giant Asians or Malaysian flowers, which I have no trouble feeding whatsoever, um, do just eat until they can't carry their own body weight and they're sick and they their abdomen can split and hence it splits and it sounds horrible it kills them so um, you do have to keep track of that these guys even though they shouldn't really be too bad to feed they are okay starter mantis um, they do sometimes um, have well, all mantises are sometimes reluctant to eat but sometimes that is the space that you have in between and sometimes that is because the mantis is going to shed um, very soon. Um, when mantises shed they don't tend to eat and they could drink so I'd still spray their cage. I wouldn't offer them any food. Um, so they may still drink and they probably won't move out of the same spot. Um, as they get older sheds are more spaced apart when they're younger sometimes it's every month sometimes it's even shorter um, but when they're older it's more like every six to eight weeks even more depending on the space in between feeding um because feeding just make their life go even faster and even shorter than the short life that they have because their lifespan is around 12 to 18 months 18 months is possible um i have had a giant african prey mantis um that has lived over a year and it is at my school now and it is still to date there because last year we had an Utheka, I can't pronounce it right, or an Oatheka, some people call it, um, and it hatched and we had about 200 and um, most of them died um, but we did have about 30 to 50 females that did survive and they, that's what happens, they do jump. 
We did have about 30 to 50 females that um, stayed to full adulthood and they were very, very healthy. The mum was actually green, but um, the babies turned out to be um, brown, like an oaky colour. So these guys do play dead sometimes and they do just act like a stick and look very weak. That's nothing. Don't worry about that. Don't think that your mantis is on the verge of death or anything like that. That is just a defensive mechanism, as you can see with this one. Um, so yeah, I'll do a care video on any other animal. I can do pretty much any other reptile, um, because I know a lot. So comment down below on any care video that you want me to do, and I'll do it. So um, obviously subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like this, and more animal and invertebrate, maybe amphibian, am ugh, amphibian stuff, um, I know enough um so yeah like the video as well and i'll see you in the next one bye bye